the official stripes of going against the grain. Welcome back to the Drum Rundown. We are here at Marathon Music Works, and I am with one of my new favorite drummers in the last handful of years, Paxson. Hi. Of Knocked Loose. What is going on, my dude? How are you? Great Good. to see you. Thanks for having nice me. Nice to hang out and catch up with you today, dude. It's Definitely. Su such a pleasure to meet you, and uh, thanks for coming to Nashville to throw down on this new album that's Absolutely. coming out. Absolutely. On Friday. Yeah. Uh, how's it been with the new album release? Dude, really, really cool. Uh, we kind of tried some new things, worked with a new producer on this one. And that always kind of gives you a little little nerves thinking like, oh, are people going to like these changes that we're sure. making? But so far, people seem to be really receptive and yeah. it's been fun. Well, as receptive as the first time you decided to work with a producer yeah. when you did that album and kind of just shot. And that was like the first thing that you had ever drummed on. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, are you talking uh, laugh tracks with, yeah. when we worked with Will? Exactly. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything else was done in, you know, a garage. and But it's cool. Like, that's what it's all about. It's It's... Working with new people, figuring out where you can take this little thing that started in this little place. and Yeah. Well, I think the human element of you playing drums as opposed to, like, the programming and stuff, you feel this, like, swing that breakdowns need to, like, breathe. Yeah, absolutely. And we were driving to another rundown, and Suffocate had come out, and we were cranking Suffocate. Cool. And then there was that little, like... Um, basically like reggaeton beat yeah oh yeah and then it just drops into like the biggest breakdown ever we were just like yes and like <laughs> awesome. rewind and re-listen to it and the thing i said to chris was dude we've been listening to hardcore and breakdowns for 20 years like you would think that we would be done with them by now they'd sure. be like boring or we've heard it all and there's just something that you guys are doing and specifically you is doing that makes it like fresh and dangerous. And we were just like, holy well, Thank fuck. you, thank you, so, I appreciate that a lot. Congratulations on what we've heard so far and we're super excited to hear the rest of the album. Thank you, brother. When it comes out. Let's talk about what's getting it done uh, yeah. night tonight in the room. SJC, dude. I think this yeah. is our first SJC on the show. Oh, cool. Yeah, which is super rad. That's so great. Let's give them love because this is, for me, this is the cream of the crop, man. Definitely, like, they're awesome, man. They, yeah. they really, care about like my identity as a drummer and uh quick turnaround too man uh all the guys went with white guitars on this record yeah and i planned on keeping this kind of wood grain kit that they did for me a couple years ago and last minute i was like can you guys throw together like a custom like white kit for me and this is what we came up with but yeah they're great man mike over there great people Cares about me, wishes me happy birthday, you know what I mean? Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, we live and die by our artist reps, so. Definitely. Shout out, man. Yeah. Uh, cool. Let's talk about what is making them up. Uh, do you know what wood plies? Yeah, I believe everything is their M5 maple. Cool. Unless something's changed, but they have done a bell brass snare drum as well, yes. which I absolutely love. They're Goliath. Uh, this thing rips. This thing's awesome. Uh, but everything, even this guy, it's a maple show, and I okay. was like, can we make it match? The brass snare drum, and so they've got me with a with a, a little brass wrap on wrap. There. Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah. I was listening to sound check. That little side snare is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This just super fun. pitched up and just like cranked. Almost sounds it. like a little timbale, but we're using it for some like groovy parts, some like dance beats, almost, yeah. which is funny to imply in or apply into knock loose for sure. Um, but yeah, they're awesome. Big shout out to SJC. They're making it happen for me, and we've also got Zildjian cymbals. I've been with Zildjian for a couple years, and. Uh, Vic for sticks, Tama hardware. Yeah. Can't go wrong. Cool. Let's get into the Zildjians. I know you yeah. said you don't have anything super out of bounds, but we like the people back home to know what you got yeah. specifically. So start me over at the hi hats and we'll work around. Yeah, real quick. definitely. These are uh, 14 inch new beat hi hats. And these might be the most sentimental symbol I've got on the kit because when I first started playing drums, I got a pair of these for Christmas and I loved them. Yeah. I thought they were so cool. And gosh, I was 13 years old. Uh, and I haven't used another pair of hi-hats since. Yeah. I've, I've messed around with, you know, like the K-hybrids and stuff like that, but I cannot get away from these. They're too cool. They sound great. Every now and then I'll even use two bottoms just to make it darker, oh, heavier. Yeah, yeah it's nice. cool. Super thick. 
Cool. These are great. Yeah. And then uh, some of the effects guys, I've got the uh, Oriental Splash. I think this is an 11, oh, yeah. which I started playing the nine, which I love like odd size symbols. Okay. Um, so like for a nine inch splash or an 11 inch splash to exist, I thought was pretty cool. But they sent me this by mistake. They might've been out of the nine inch one and it just sounds louder, darker, yeah, trashier. And I was like, I'm gonna keep rocking with the 11. And then with the 12 inch Oriental China, they complement each other really well. And then I've actually got all Oriental effects stuff, yeah, which I'm loving. Uh, and then uh, crashes, I play two 20 inch Okay. Projection crashes. Yep. And uh, George, who used to play drums and stick to your guns, I, I noticed on tour with them years ago, he was playing two of the same crash cymbals. And I was like, that's smart. No one's going to tell the difference. They're going to sound different enough for the sure. music that we're doing. That I'm like, fuck, I'll just, it's easy to order. I can just say, hey, give me four <laughs> of these for the road and then yeah. swap them out when we need to. And uh, I also have one more story about. The Mega Bell, for man, the, yeah, <laughs> come on. I'm you thinking. cannot, you cannot deny this symbol. You cannot. But for the longest time, like I said, I've been with with Zildjian for a good few years now, but I did our uh, a tear in the fabric life EP with all all Zildjian, but I had a Sabian Mega Bell or whatever their version yeah. is, their Power Bell or something mm -hmm. like that, and I was playing it live, and my Zildjian rep Eric caught me in Massachusetts still playing the Sabian ride. He's like, dude, I'm sending you a Mega Bell and we're getting you off this. So that's where this came from. Oh no, twist my arm. Right, please oh no, no, Megabell please, ride. no. Yeah. <laughs> but it's great. They've sent me the, um, that Mega Bell of Doom. Yes. It was like the Crash of Doom with the Mega Bell right. to mess around with. But this thing live is just what it's all about. It's, I mean, it's cutting through everything. It's loud and our front of house guy, Matt, knows how to mic it up. Yeah. But this thing's great. And then uh, this is kind of a new ad. I did a record with Dude, this K-Suite, man. 23-inch K-Suite. They're so good. It's, it's been on record since Laugh Tracks, but I just started playing with it live, like maybe within the last year or two. Uh, but just for the big, heavy parts, mm -hmm. I mean, this thing crashes like nobody's business. Yep. Uh, and at last, I, I don't think I've, this may be the second one I've had in the last few Dude, years. don't like, curse it, bro. I know, I know. I, I got to knock on wood or something, whatever, man. Whatever, yeah. But yeah, that's it for symbols. Let's talk about these heads that you got on. I see Evans G2 coded. Yeah, yeah. So this this was factory. This came from SJC with the G2s on there. I like them a lot. I am typically a black chrome guy. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know what it was. I bought them at a guitar center years ago, and I'm like, I can get these where I want them immediately. Uh, so what I have stocked for the rest of the tour have all been black chrome heads. Once I beat these, we'll swap those out. I did stick with a G2 for the side snare. I just... It came It came with one on. I really like the way it sounds. And uh, I'm like, if it ain't broke, don't fix yeah, it. And sure. typically, what have we got? A power center reverse dot. This is new to me. Uh, this is my first time in my life having a, a like a drum tech yeah. working with me. And Jacob has thrown all these on. And typically, I'm like an HD dry guy or something right. like that. But I do want to find like my forever head. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I feel like Black Chrome is that for the toms. EMAD 2 is that for the kick. Yeah. But I'm working on finding my forever head. I use that, uh, I don't know if I got one laying around. The, it's kind of power center, reverse dot, but it's hazy. Yeah, the hazy. You know exactly. what I mean? Yep. I, I've used that for years. I really dig it. But I think on the bell brass, it sounds a little too, I'm going to say synthetic, like, like feels like a plastic head right. rather than, I feel like it could breathe a little more. Yeah. So I'm working on finding that. And uh, I know we got moon gels on the toms, but I love leaving the snare open. We got a really good ping out of the yeah. snare on the record. And I just want to let it breathe and let it be its natural tone. And, and, and there's not too much overtone in that. I think that center dot is kind of just raining it in definitely. just a little bit. Definitely. But it still rings out and it cuts through. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Yeah, thank What you. are on the resonant heads? What's on the bottom? Rezos, I want to say just the standard uh, Evans Rezos. Are yeah. they Genevas or something like that? I think, well, yeah. We'll, I would have to take a look. I'll honestly. look when I go out <laughs> cool. before you play and we'll, we'll double check and make sure. And then EMADs, uh, the EMAD 2, are you doing foam ring in or out? I'm doing foam ring in. Thin or thick? Pretty thick. Is it the thick ring? Uh, it's got to be. Yeah, because I see it peeking through. So yeah. But thick, uh, do you think it's funny that I have a pillow in my dead kick drum? Yeah. 
Thank you. It's funny. Thank you. I, why? I don't know. It was day one. We were at rehearsals, and I was like, okay, I got to buy two pillows from Walmart. Like, <laughs> And then I did it, and balance, I'm like, wait dude, a minute. You want to balance everything out? Pillow <laughs> yeah. and the dead thing. You could be stashing stuff in there, keep down on freight. Honestly, you know? yeah. Put some clothes in there or something, I don't know, <laughs> yeah, for the road, right? Dude, yeah, some stage shorts or post-show socks yeah, or something like dude, that. Yeah, dude, anything. I mean, whatever. Or an extra pillow if the hotel sucks. That's a great point. Yeah, get in there. Reach through the porthole, pull that puppy out. <laughs> cool. Man, and six wise, uh, Vic Fur. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I see your stamp on yeah, the big thick. I'll stamp. try and get the uh, I don't know if I can show my little face on that camera there. But uh I love working with Vic Firth, man. Eric Gross has been my guy. I love this story. I had no deals. This is twenty sixteen, and I had a backpack full of you ever go to a guitar center, you can get the miss yep. the mismade Vic Firth sticks, yep. unbranded. And I had a backpack full of them. And I took a picture, I tweeted at Zild or uh, at Vic Firth. And I was like, hey guys, love your product. I'll keep <laughs> using it, but if you want to do anything, let me know. And he shot me an email and I've been working with him ever since. And when Vic Firth and Zildjian merged, uh, I was with Sabian at the time. And I said, can I just hop over to you guys? And he was like, yeah, all day. Nice. Easy connect. But I play two Bs, which are a little thicker than your standard. Yeah. I feel like five B is kind of the industry standard. and. I uh, embarrassingly felt like I was dropping them a lot. And I was like, I need something thicker to hold on to. All right. And uh, Eric sent me kind of just like a, like a, a flight of sticks, if you will. He sent me. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Probably eight to 12 different sizes. And I landed on two Bs and I love them. And some people are like, how are you? How are your hands? Like, you, yeah. do you hate yourself? I was like, no, they're perfect. They're perfect cool. for me. Yeah, well, it's given a lot of power. Definitely. I and mean, it's crushing. Definitely. Yeah. I do break a couple more crashes here and there, but it's worth it. It's the price of doing business, man. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. Let's talk about this snare. Yeah, dude. I mean, Bell Brass is just like, yeah, it's just, it's won me over. It's and awesome. Anytime you hear a Bell Brass snare, it's like, it's I know awesome. it's like cliche or whatever at this point, but like, dude. They sound the best. Absolutely. You yeah. can't go wrong. It's fucking the 25 pound. Can I cuss on here? Fuck yeah, All dude. Right. You better. <laughs> it's like 25 pounds of snare drum, which anytime I'm like, someone's helping me like load on, load off, I hand yeah. it to them. They're like, whoa, right. what are you doing to me? Uh, but this is great. This, I think when I hit them up about it, I didn't own, this is really stupid. I did not own a spare snare drum. So if anything happened to me live, I would have to like scramble ask with the other guys. With a 25 pound snare drum? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So now I do, I, I roll around with it. It might be behind you, but uh, I've got oh, a Steve copper guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I, this is, again, my second bell brass snare because mine was stolen out of my car, oh, parked savvy. in my backyard. Yeah, so SJC, again, were cool enough to say, oh, man, that really sucks. We have to make a new one. Like, it took yeah. months for me to get it. And, uh, dude, I, I literally, like, once it was stolen, I was like, that's my baby. Like, I right. need this thing back. But you can't go wrong. I wish it'd be too cool if they made a bell, a 10-inch bell brass. Like, There's your side sig, snare. dude. That's That'd your signature cool. drum. That'd be really that cool. That would be sick. I love that they wrapped this for you. You mentioned that they wrapped it for you to, to look like your main snare. Yeah. I think that's just like a really slick, just balances everything Definitely. out. Definitely. I love keeping it cohesive. And even, the, like I said, the rest of the guys went all white guitars. They've got gold hardware. Yeah. And I was thinking, man, I got to go chrome because of the stands. But I feel like the brass of the snare drums... And the symbols just kind of ties, ties it all, all together. Yeah, yeah. And speaking of balance, you're rocking two kick drums. I am. But I also see a double kick pedal. Yes, yes. Yeah, so. One is a dummy. The and mystery I, is, I is hate, gone. In, I know, I hate admitting that. <laughs> but uh, every sound guy that we've worked with in the last few yeah. years have said, do not do that to me. Like, right. please, for the love of God. And I've also heard playing two real kick drums feels different like because you, you're never going to tune them exactly the same yeah. and i'm wondering if that's something like would that take me a while to get used to or something like that but for for consistency's sake i do have the double pedal yeah. with the uh the dummy kick we've drum. had a couple guys say uh they like tuning them different so that it has different characters so it's not oh, cool. so like uniform they like it that yeah. way so i think it's just you know it's what you like personal preference yeah uh let's talk about what's down there, yeah. it is the Tama Speed Cobras. Speed Cobras. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So These how are did you get to the Speed Cobra as your... I played uh, Iron Cobras for a long time. I actually used to be with Tama. Nothing like I wasn't on the website. I just knew yeah. the guy. He gave me a nice deal. And uh, the Iron Cobras were really cool. Kind of your classic, like my first double bass pedal. It was for me at least. 
And I started doing just the slightest bit of heel toe. Yeah. I can't run with it or anything like that, but like for these like roughs, yeah. I'll heel toe it. And these have a slightly longer footboard than the Iron Cobra. Yeah, those board. are long boys. Definitely. And I can, again, it, it just helps me kind of hit that, the axis of the pedal or something like right. that. And I can hit those roughs. And just to keep it cohesive, I went with the uh, Speed Cobra hi-hat stand as well. Nice. Yeah. But they're great. I, I've used them for years, honestly, gosh, probably over a decade. Uh, and I beat the crap out of them. I think every maybe two years, I just get a new pair, throw the old pair on the kit at home, yeah. and then rock with uh, some freshies. Cool. You doing They're anything great. interesting in the beer land, or are you just kind of no, going stock beaters there? just stock with, with what came with them. Uh, but I've heard the argument. I've seen guys play with these wooden bass drum beaters. Yeah. And uh, one of my buddies made the argument. He's like, you're hitting every other drum with a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what drumming's all about. Like, why would you not right. use a wooden beater? And I'm like, that's a really good point. So I'm thinking about making the switch. I don't know if it would do anything for me feel-wise or sonically, but... Uh, I think it I think all changes because I think a lot of people are starting to play with that. I know I certainly do. You can turn it around, play with the plastic. Yeah. People are putting the nickel on there. Yeah. I'm playing with a skate wheel sometimes or like oh, the cool. big poof, puffy ball. There's so many things to do, man. Yeah. yeah, it's all dynamics. And I feel like for us, with by the time it gets to front of house and Matt does his thing, it's just going to sound like... A I, I'm hoping it sounds like a Harley driving down the street. Dude, but, uh, <laughs> well, sound check. We were it, we were dancing. Yeah, That's why cool. I'm sweating. I, I on saw you camera, guys down so there. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to my girlfriend. My hair looks like trash because I'm sweating dancing it to you guys great. already during a sound check. Um, that was another thing that I noticed on some of the songs, and you were talking about, uh, you know, some of the the uh, influences that are creeping in. I hear a lot of different rhythms and patterns, like the reggaeton beat or like a four on the floor disco beat at some moments like what have, has kind of got you to play with some of these different beats as you guys are developing your style? honestly i would say that's that's a group effort uh especially like the reggaeton beat was was a group conversation that we were like could we pull this off yeah like it would be great if we could find a way that's still knock loose still heavy but implementing something that different yeah uh so that was a group conversation and honestly i think the dance beat was there's a there's a joke amongst us five uh, that I have to add a new thing to the kit every record. Right. <laughs> and I made the joke. I was like, oh, I'll get a second snare drum. And they're like, okay, record time. Like, where's your second snare drum? Yeah. And I was like, okay, we'll figure something out. Mm -hmm. And we found one in the studio that we liked. It used to be an old rack tom that our buddy, our engineer, Zach, kind of finessed together to make it this cool pingy side snare. Right. Um, where was I going? Oh, oh, so for me to add the second snare, they're like, what are we going to do with it? Yeah. Like, like other than the standard, like just, just a different snare drum sound, they're like, we have to utilize it in a, in a cool, interesting, interesting way. Yeah. And I think that's where the, the little dance beat came yeah. from too. But we we're finding- We do BGs into a breakdown, dude. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. It's fun. Oh, it, yeah. It, 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 it excites me too, because I'm now- I feel like creative again. Yeah. Not that I necessarily wasn't before, but it's like, oh, if I'm adding something new, there's so many things I can I can use it for. Uh, so that's where like some of those beats are coming from. It's like, what can we do different? What can we do different that still sounds like Knock Loose? Yeah. And that's well, where it came from. Well, it's certainly exciting out there. It's exciting on the singles that are already released and I can't wait to see what you guys did Thank on you. the rest of it, man. Thank you. There's, yeah. some, there's some wild shit that we've never done before, so. Like I, I said, we were smiling ear to ear when we just heard some of those breakdowns, and it's like breakdowns are fresh and new again. Yeah. And it, that's like such a treat for fans of this kind of music. Thank man, you. To thank like you. Not be bored with another breakdown. Definitely. Some of the low end, I was just like, I, I need a new butthole. Like, this is just, <laughs> yeah, it's done. Well, good so, luck. Good yeah, luck with congratulations. That. Thank Go you, check out the new record. It's out on Friday. I'm here with Pac Sun of Knock Loose. This is the drum rundown. We will see you all on the next one.